Good afternoon, everyone. The September 28th, 2010 meeting of the Recreation and Education Committee will now come to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Gamble? Here. Mr. Gamina? Here. Ms. Cayley? Here. Mr. Cucciarello? Here. Cherylman Valerio? Here. Is there anyone signed up for the public forum? Uh, no, there is not. Wonderful. Is, is there anyone present who is not signed up to speak would like to address the committee at this time? Perhaps Mr. Quinn? Would you like to announce our wonderful flower of the month? Flower of the month, I guess. Okay. Um, obviously, right in front of you, we have a chrysanthemum. Um, very appropriate this time of year. You see them everywhere. They're in bloom now out in the, out in the uh, anywhere in the Rochester area. Uh, there's two distinctly different kinds. These are what you call hardy mums or, or garden mums. You see them referred to by both, both names. And that means they're basically hardy in this area. They'll actually grow as a perennial in your garden. But there's, that's not always true. Um, what really happens is, you know, people will see that uh, perennial mum or, or garden mum and think that it'll grow if they buy it like this and plant it this week. They may not make it. Really, if you want to get them to grow in your garden, you have to plant them a little earlier in the, in the season. So they, they need about six or eight weeks before a hard frost before they grow in your garden. Um, the other mums are actually uh, florist mums, and they're not hardy in the Rochester area. Uh, we produce a whole bunch in the greenhouses in Monroe County for a show that we'll be putting on. It starts uh, October 29th. And the garden mums are distinctly different. The flowers tend to be much bigger. We grow some standards that are really interesting. They've got flower heads that are, you know, maybe baseball size or bigger, and they can be as high as my shoulders in the, in the, in the display. Uh, two distinctly different types. There's pinched ones, which are, have a lot of flowers like this, and then there's standards where we actually take uh, the side buds off, so we only allow one major bloom to form, and that allows for one big flower. If you don't take the side buds off, they actually shoot a lot of smaller flowers. So the show, we're putting something on the order of 500 mums in the conservatory. Uh, it'll be a great show. Uh, interesting plant. It's one of the oldest plants in culture, or one of the oldest flowers in cultivation. There's records of it being cultivated as early as 500 BC. Again, they do particularly well here. They like uh, full sun, well-drained soil. Um, if you want them to grow perennially in your garden, uh, plant them a little earlier than this. The, the, the kind you get here are mostly grown as an annual for this fall's display. Some of them would make it. If I planted all these, those ones in the center, they're extremely hardy. They'd probably make it. Uh, some of the other ones, the purple ones there, they're not going to make it ever if I plant them here because even though they say they're a hardy mum, they're only good to about uh, 20 degrees. So if you're interested in keeping them growing forever in your garden, you've got to look up the individual varieties, and there's probably over 1,000 varieties because they've been in cultivation for so long. Any questions? Do you cut them back? Um, yeah. If you want a heavy... heavy uh, bloom, what you need to do is pinch them back, and you pinch them back through about early July. As they come up, you keep pinching the top terminal buds, and that widens them out. And, and then before winter, though, though do you... Um, oh, you don't have to cut them down before winter. I mean, basically, no. you can. After, they, after they're done blooming, either cut them down in the end of the season or the beginning of the spring, okay. and then they'll come back up. But to get them big and bushy like this in the early season, you actually have to pinch the heads back, or you'll get a much sparser plant. Um, Lamberton Conservatory, and it's it's really one of the nicer displays. It's it, it's it's fascinating to see what they can do with mums, and we grow them in in house, and we grow uh, a number of varieties and, and types. So it's it's a great show to see that the county puts on. Yep. It should be it'll be open by uh, hours are ten to four, seven days a week, and uh, it will be open by the 29th. Regularly, we get it in a few days before that because we start a little early to make sure it's in by the open date. And what is the admission to the laboratory? Uh, Three dollars. But there is a season pass. You can for ten dollars, you can buy yourself a season pass. Yeah, it's a real good deal. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Adding color to our life. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. You have the June, June 29th, wow, it's been that long, um, <laughs> minutes of the Recreation and Education Committee. Um, they will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. The next item on the agenda is new business. Madam Clerk. Referral 10-273. Second. 
Moved by Mr. Cicciarello, second by Mr. Gumina. Are there any questions? There being none, all those in fa favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Bill 10-274. Moved by Mr. Gamina, seconded by Mr. Cicciarello. Are there any questions? Mrs. Kaler. Um, thank you. Through the chair. Uh, I love it sometimes. Um, through the chair. With regards to the contract for Sutter's Marine, um, the um, Arundaquite Bay Harbor Management Plan stated uh, some time ago that Sutter's Marina may not may no longer be viable for marine activity. Was this taken into consideration when this contract was um, decided to be entered in on? Through you, Madam Chair, uh, yes, that was considered. Um, at the time of that, uh, when the plan did come out, uh, they were anticipating a lower water depth, and we have not experienced any problems with our water depth at our marina. So um, we felt very comfortable in uh, extending this contract. Oh, thank you. Um, and just a little bit of a follow-up on that. Since we haven't had any low water mark low re recession of receding of the water. Um, you don't expect that it's going to happen in the future. And, and the reason I ask that is, is that we're extending this for essentially a 15 year period. Um, would it be wise to do that? Or are you going to use those consecutive five year contract um, options to deal with a water issue if it's not viable? Through you, Madam Chair, um, following the trends in um, the uh, lake levels in uh, Lake Ontario, I think that um, it's going in the direction where the lake levels are going to be consistent at uh, this level. So I would anticipate that the levels in the bay will be uh, about what they are now. But that's the beauty of, as you said, the uh, five-year agreement with two five-year extensions. We're not going for a, you know, just a one-shot 15. Uh, so we can take a look at this contract every five years and make a decision as to whether the county wants to continue. Thank you. And lastly, do you, one of the recommendations was a consolidation of services and, and the county actually creating its own entity. Do you feel that that's ever going to be a possibility in the future? Through you, Madam Chair, the consolidation of what services? I'm sorry, I wasn't very clear. Um, Well, not verbatim, but basically in this particular plan, it talked of the county actually doing the services themselves. Um, through you, Madam Chair, you know, we have, we look at that every time we put one of these out. Um, for example, um, this past uh, uh, year, you approved um, uh, doing away with the privatized cleaning of lodges uh, in the last budget. And we took that function back because we were able to show that we could do it uh, much more efficiently and at a cheaper cost. So every time we look at one of these privatization deals, um, we see if we could um, do it cheaper and uh, better. Um, the problem with this one, and, and it's not a problem, it's a good thing for the county because as you see, you know, we're making um, more money on this, on the renewal, but um, when this uh, contract was originally done, Mr. Sutter was required to put the docks in himself, and they're his property. So for the county to take that over, we would have to put in brand new docks or purchase Mr. Sutter's. So it wasn't economically viable for us to do. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? There being none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item on the agenda. Bill 10-275. Mr. Cicciarello, seconded by Mr. Gumina. Any questions? Mr. Gumina. Through you, Madam Chair. Uh, was this particular project included in the original CIP? 
Uh, through the chair, Jason Kennedy with Environmental Services, the engineering group. Um, this project is uh, window replacements were previously contemplated for the college. Um, this additional project is necessary to complete the balance of the uh, window work at the campus. It's campus wide. Um, so certainly window and masonry repairs have been contemplated in prior CIPs. This particular project um, was not included and, and that's why we're asking to amend the 1015 CIP. Through you, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, what percentage, if any, is reimbursable by New York State? Uh, through the chair, this project will be eligible for the 50% um, state match through the SUNY capital program. Is it 50 or 15? 50%. 50, thank you. Through you, Madam Chair, is, has it always been 50? Do we see a decrease in that considering our financial implications for the state? Uh, through the chair, no, to, to my knowledge, it's always uh, a 50% okay. match. Thank you. Any other questions? There being none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Bill 10-276. Moved by Mr. Tuturello, or, I'm sorry, moved by Mr. Gamina, seconded by Mr. Tuturello. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor, signify by say, saying aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Uh, are there any other matters to come before this committee? There being no further business, this temp oh, I'm sorry. Excuse Oops. me. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, um, I have one question for uh, Mr. Stark. Um, uh, I think it was three committees or four committees back we have has been brought to our attention about the basketball courts out at um, Lake Ontario, the park. Did we come up with anything um, to remedy that situation or a plan as to what's going to happen with that? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, no. Um, at this point, the uh, hoops have been removed and um, uh, taken away. Um, we really don't have the uh, funding to be able to uh, uh, go in there at this time. So it would, be have, it would have to be something that we'd look at in a future capital budget or other uh, uh, projects. Oh, so excuse me, do you, Madam Chair. So next season, there will be no courts out there? Is, that, is it safe to say that or? Through you, Madam Chair, unless uh, I have some money fall from the sky, I really don't see um, hoops being reinstalled there. I think that there's some other alternatives that we could uh, uh, try there with uh, funding that we have in place for um, those kinds of activities. So um, we might be taking a look at reprogramming that area. Thank you. Um, excuse me, one last question to you, Madam Chair. Um, the list of activities, are they setting up a committee to see what they're going to replace that with if there are alternatives or what other activities may be used in that area? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I wouldn't anticipate putting together a committee. Um, I'd look at the uh, viability of that area and um, recreational activities that would fit in there. Um, we have started to look at that. Um, but I would definitely um, be looking for something that um, is recreational in nature. Thank you. Um, all, um, through you, Madam Chair, all I ask is that you keep us informed as to what you may be considering so the constituents can have some idea. So they've been calling about that. Thank you. And which, which park is this? Shillot. Shillot. Through you, Madam Chair, Ontario Beach Park. Ontario yeah. Beach, thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Any further questions or comments? All right, there being no further business, this September 28th, 2010 meeting of the Recreation and Education Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Recreation and Education Committee is scheduled for October 26, 2010 at 5 p.m. Thank you.